Another great creature to look for when you're thinking about planning for the future is the leaf cutter ant. We've talked about the leaf cutter ant before. It's got this amazing supply chain mechanism. I thought for the longest time seeing those fancy pictures in scientific magazines that the ants just went out and they chomped up these leaves and they ate them right then and there and that was their source of food. But it turns out the leaf cutter ant takes that leaf back into the ant colony. There's a whole other set of worker ants that chomp up the leaves and turn them into goo and then they add some enzymes and it turns out the enzymes grow a fungus and it's the fungus that those ants actually eat. So they are not just procuring and consuming. They're procuring and then creating this huge internal source of supply that doesn't just help them today or tomorrow, it helps them far into the future. And it doesn't just help one ant, it helps the entire colony. So if you're an investor and you're planning for the future, this points out some really cool dimensions. One is, you know, sometimes there's something you can do today that's not actually going to help you for a few days or a few months or a few years into the future, but once it does, it actually pays off in a really perpetual and ongoing way. That's pretty cool. Another neat element is that the ants, when they're making that investment and procuring the leaves in the first place, they end up creating something that benefits them, but also benefits the entire colony. This is something that is true for most investing, and yet we tend to put it into this different category of social investing or impact investing. All investing has this combination of individual benefit and collective benefit. It also has elements of individual cost and collective cost. Looking to the ants, I think, helps make these questions more tangible and more easy to consider as investors. We'd be wise to do so.